Hello and welcome to the final day, day seven in your seven day Poker Tracker 4 orientation. We are talking Leak Tracker today. My name is Sky Matsuhashi of SmartPokerStudy.com and we are so glad that you came back for the final day. Let's do this. Speaking of the final day, it's the final itinerary. So this is what we're covering in the video. Once again, do as you consume, have Poker Tracker 4 open and click along right with me. We're going to be taking a look at the Leak Tracker tab, which you can see a picture of it right down there on the right. I'm going to show you how to run an analysis, and I'll cover all these different options down here. I'm going to help you interpret the results. You can see those uh, little bar graphs on the left down there. We're going to talk about the statistical details and what you can learn from this area. And then we're going to review a leaky area. Now, I have leaky in quotes because Leak Tracker helps you find potential leaks. If your statistics fall outside of a certain range, it doesn't mean that you have a leak there, but it's definitely worth looking into because there's a good chance you have a leak. That's why it's quote unquote leaky potential areas, right? And then lastly, I'll give you two action steps to get you learning with Leak Tracker. Alrighty, so we have yesterday's player from the day six video, PP327. We have him pulled up right now. We're going to run his database of 2,500 hands through Leak Tracker. Now, before we go to Leak Tracker, one quick note for everybody. If you're a tournament player and you're on the tournament tab, you're not going to see Leak Tracker. It only works for cash game hands. But that doesn't mean you as a tournament player cannot learn from Leak Tracker. So I recommend that you continue watching this video. And if you even have 500 or 1,000 cash game hands, go ahead and run what you have for cash games right now. Get yourself some practice with Leak Tracker because I guarantee the things that we're going to learn in this video will help you even though you are a tournament player. So from the Stats tab, simply click on Leak Tracker. Now that brings us to the Leak Tracker tab right here. Up at the top section, is or are the parameters for our analysis. First off, the game, Hold'em or Omaha, whatever it is, select it. The stakes, low stakes or high stakes. Now, PP327, as we saw yesterday, was a 100 NL or $1 big blind player. That's considered part of low stakes. If you run the analysis and no hands come up and you play at 200 or 400 NL, it's probably a high stakes thing for you. Now, table size right here, you got full tables, which is what PP327 plays on, shorthanded or six max, and then heads up tables. And then lastly, bet type, no limit or pot limit, and then fixed limit right here. Now, every time I run Leak Tracker, unless I really want to dive in, I know specifically myself or my student has a problem in the small, in the big blind, in the cutoff, then I'll choose positional analysis. But right now, I just want to see overall where... Uh, PP327's leaks potentially lie. So once the parameters are all selected, let's hit Run Analysis. So the analysis just finished. It took like 10 seconds or so. And the first thing I notice when that happens is this line right here, 2,531 hands. More hands are required for accurate results. But I don't think this itself is accurate. Um, this should say for reliable results because over such a small sample size, any leaks that Leak Tracker detects might not actually be there if you had 10, 15, 20,000 hands. I think th these are accurate results actually. Um, if we click on VPIP right now, so after you run your own analysis, click on it right now. This tells us that PP327, his VPIP is 66%. Right now, over 2,500 hands, that's accurate, right? But in the long run, it might not be exactly what his VPIP is. So, but trust these results. They are there. Now, let's look at just this specific VPIP line. When you click on it, right, or actually before clicking on it, this little bar graph, this green area represents the average winning player's ranges. Now, when it comes to VPIP, and I'll show you where I get these numbers in just a little bit. But these are the average V-pipping for low stakes, full ring games, which is what PP327 plays on. So this 11.2 to 22.8, that's represented by this green area. As you can see, this player's V-pip well outside of it at 66%. 
Yeah, a potential leak, right? He's V-pipping way, V-pipping way too much, playing way more hands than he should. His opponents with tighter ranges have that mathematical advantage against him, and he's just giving money to his opponents, as evidenced by all those losses that we saw yesterday, right? So that's the first thing. Um, with the leak tracker analysis, you want to start going through and take a look for any statistic where your black line, where your stat falls outside of the average winner's range. So let's zero in on VPIP right now. With VPIP, once you click on it, the same stat details come up as if you had used the configure and statistics report. We have a definition for VPIP and then the formula for VPIP just to help you understand those numbers a little bit. Now, the determination of this player's VPIP is that it's a potential problem. Once again, that keyword potential is there. It doesn't mean it's for uh, uh, for sure an automatic leak, especially if that stat is or the line is really close to the ranges, but a potential problem, right? Now, you can click right here, watch the video on this stat. If you clicked on this right now, uh, a video would pop up. I'm not going to have it pop up for you, um, but a video would pop up that gives you information. It tells you this stuff right here. It gives you these ranges for the average winning players. Plus, it gives you some strategies for decreasing or increasing your VPIP as necessary for this player. VPIPing at 66, he's really got to get that down. So whatever strategies they discuss in that video, he should truly be paying attention and implementing those strategies. VPIPs less, gets him to the flop more often with better ranges, allowing him to uh, just lose less money, but hopefully start making some money. Now, for my computer, in order to watch the video right now, I need to have the Flash Player installed in my computer, but I don't have it installed. For So for those of you also who don't have Flash Player, if you click on this, the video won't pop up. But here's what I'd recommend you do. Go to PokerTracker.com slash videos slash PT4. It's going to bring you to this page. And you have all different kinds of videos that Poker Tracker 4 already made to help you understand and work with the program. But for our purposes right now, let's click on Leak Tracker. You can see there are 54 videos within the Leak Tracker page right here. So just you could go straight to this URL if you'd like. Now, each of these videos, once you play it, it's going to do exactly what I told you. It's going to give you information about the stat, the uh, optimal ranges for winning players, and then it's going to tell you how to decrease or increase that stat. So to find VPIP, and I believe it's just all alphabetical, Go to last, the last page, and then bam, there's VPIP. You click on this, it'll give you a one minute and 15 second video on um, uh, understanding and making changes to your game to change your VPIP percentage. So let's go ahead and continue our analysis of PP327's leak tracker report. We can see VPIP way too high, PFR slightly high, but it's not the end of the world. PFR divided by VPIP, let's click on this right here. It's the ratio of how often a player raises preflop to how often he puts money in preflop. The value is 19.7, way too low. That means that gap between VPIP and PFR is too high. He's way too passive. Got to get that one up, right? Three bet, definitely on the low side right here. If we look at it, oh, only 1% of the time, he might only three bet with queens or better, maybe even just kings or better. What are some areas? Flop AF or aggression factor is quite low. Aggression frequency, very low as well. We can scroll on down. You have a whole area out of the blinds. Fold blind to a steal. If we click on this, wow, 38% he folds. Like we said earlier in yesterday's video, that means he continues 62%. His blind defending range is way too wide, right? So like I said before, they might not be the most reliable results because it's 2,500 hands, but all of this is accurate. All of these black lines really would help PP327 find where his leaks are and where he should be spending his time studying. So we found some potential leaky areas for PP327. Right now, I want to focus on fold blind to a steal. So let's go to the stats tab. Now, there's a couple ways that if we were P327, we can dive into the blind uh, facing a steal hands. First is by filtering. We can do some kind of filtering or maybe even the HHRV, the Hold'em Hand Range Visualizer shown in a prior video. Or we could just start reviewing hands 
out of the big blind, maybe sort it by currency one. So we could see, whoa, we lost so much with queen 10 suited. How did we lose a full bind with ace nine offsuit, right? Go through and start reviewing those hands. One of the things I really like to do, and I'll show you once again real quick, is the hold them hand range visualizer because it's a no holds barred look, a brutal look at the hands you chose to play. So let's say, you know, we're PP327 really concerned with the blinds right now. So let's go to Hold'em, Hand Range, Visualizer. Not raising first in, I guarantee this player loses a lot of money when calling preflop two bets. So let's click on this, not in the early position, let's go to just the small blind, the worst position at the table. So PP327, now keep in mind that we're only seeing hands that went to showdown because this isn't our database. If you're running this right now for yourself, you would see so many more hands that you called two bets with out of the small blind. But let's look at some of these hands that this player is calling with. 6-3 offsuit, 5-4 suited, jack-9 offsuit, pocket aces? Why aren't you three betting, PP327? Ace-8 off, ace-7 off, ace-4 off, king-deuce suited. So many super weak hands. Now you can imagine, if he's calling 6-3 off, oh, well, he might be calling 6-4. 7 6-5, 7-6, 8-5, 7-4, 9-6, 8-7, 10-7, right? We've only seen this one hand get to showdown. But if he's calling this low, he's calling all this other slightly stronger, but yet very weak stuff as well. So we're analyzing this player right now. Now that we see this, we can see he's able to call in the worst spot in the small blind with one of the worst potential hands, right? A great player to be targeting when we're not in the blinds because he's calling so wide. Oh man, I love playing against players like this, you know? But that's how I would do it. Either use them, hold them hand range visualizer, go through and start filtering, but look for hands if this was your own database, right, going through Leak Tracker, look for hands where you're making mistakes. Find those leaky areas, quote unquote leaky areas, and determine whether or not it really is a leak. So as we said earlier, 2,500 hands, they, it's not a reliable sample. But in this case, it is reliable. He's called with such weak stuff in the past, in the small blind. Man, this is a leak of his 100%. So it is time for you to take some action. Step number one, or action step number one, is run Leak Tracker. Hopefully you ran it for yourself, but if not, take time right now or in your next study session to do so. Review the results and the statistical details, dive into any leaky areas, watch the videos, figure out how you can increase or decrease your uh, uh, statistical percentages to get you closer to those average winner's ranges. Of course, once again, play 200 hands today. Continue to use your HUD. Now that you've really found a few different leaky areas with these various videos, you should really know where you should be focusing your studies and your play on, right? So focus on plugging the leak that you found with Leak Tracker or the Hold'em Hand Range Visualizer or when we were going through the Stats page, Statistics tab, and uh, Running Filters. Whatever it is, start working on plugging specific leaks that you found and did some more research on. Now, thank you so much for picking up Poker Tracker 4, either through the free trial or purchasing it outright. We really do appreciate you doing that. For further information and support, you can go to www.pokertracker.com slash guides slash PT4. Also, that videos page that I showed you earlier, going to uh, have a lot of good stuff to help you get more out of Poker Tracker 4. Speaking of getting more from Poker Tracker 4, I have a free 77-minute course that I called Get More from Poker Tracker 4. You can find it and download it for free by going to smartpokerstudy.com slash poker dash programs. And if you want to see tons more Poker Tracker 4 videos, go to youtube.com slash smartpokerstudy. That is my own YouTube channel where I have made Oh my gosh, dozens upon dozens, maybe even hundreds of Poker Tracker 4 related videos by now. So, once again, on behalf of Poker Tracker 4, this is Sky Matsuhashi, and I want to thank you so much for picking up the program and going through the seven day orientation. Good luck to you on the rest of your poker journey.